Hi everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for the organizers for inviting me here. Thank you very much. Um, about two years ago, uh, during my master thesis, I already collected some um, experience with the visualization of interactive uh, with the interactive visualization of genome regulation graphs. Uh, and now, two years later, I'm really happy that I continue my research during my PhD thesis. Uh, here you can see a screenshot uh, of IGB with uh, one single linear reference genome and uh, lots of samples with uh, genetic variation. And the genetic variation is displayed as bars and dashes in uh, metrics like layout. Overall, this uh, representation of a whole genome population lacks visual clarity. And one reason for this is that the uh, data structure behind IGME and similar genome, graph, uh, genome browsers uh, limits their visualization power. So one solution here would be to take all the variant data together, combine it into one single data structure, and for example, a genome variation graph. And two years ago, there weren't many uh, data structures around. There was a population reference graph, a graph table, and of course, most prominently, a VG, which was able to perform a lot of different tasks. However, when we have such a data structure, we also want to inspect it and we want to take a look at it. So, at that time, also there was a lack of such tools. There was a GraphVis, which was able to render aesthetic pictures via VG view. And there were some uh, graph assembly browsers out there, but that's not really ap applicable to take a closer look at such graph genomes. There was also sequence tube maps, um, which is a JavaScript library, as already mentioned by Eric. But there was no interactive uh, solution, no solution for an interactive uh, genome browser. So I tried to tackle that in my master thesis, and here shortly you can see again the data structure and visualization layout. Just to remind you again, so for example, we have two genomes. When when they share the same sequence, they all actually go through the same node, and with, when they have a different sequence, they traverse through different nodes. And usually, the node's width uh, reflects the sequence length that is displayed. So in my prototype implementation, as a data structure, of course, I use VG. And as a web server, I use Node.js. And in order to connect both of them uh, as an interface, I uh, used NBind. So that I was able to build a high performance uh, implementation in order that the subgraphs can be shipped very fast to the client. Oh, okay. Yeah, and on the client side I used sequence to maps to do the visualization. Um, here you can see the actual implementation. So on top the users was able to select between different node colorings, layouts, Zoom levels, and also select the current data set to view. <clears throat> Furthermore, the user was able to browse uh, the graph by jumping to a certain position or to a gene, or even click directly on this blue bar to select a certain position. On the left-hand side, uh, the currently displayed genes are shown. On the right-hand side, the currently displayed paths or genomes are shown. And the uh, heat map legend actually explains the current node coloring. In the image of you, you can see those uh, uh, tracks similar to IGB, which uh, also displays the genes. And another way to visualize this would be to just color actually the nodes to reach this gene travels. And that makes it easier to I recognize its actual nucleotide sequence. Another unique feature was this node compression. So what is done here is that each node's height, uh, it, each node has the same height, is drawn with the same height, and then every path or genome 
is drawn on top of each other. So we can compress the whole view together and only focus on the variation that is going on within this graph. And having this node coloring, if you remember from before, red means that this is a rather rare variant, and blue means this is a very common variant. We can easily uh, pick, variant, pick out certain variants that are maybe rare and then of certain interest, for example. And with this visualization concept, we theoretically are able to visualize variants of even thousands of individuals. But that prototype had some certain limitations. So they learn a sophisticated zoom levels, and because of the JavaScript to C bindings, the implementation effort was really high. And the project was not further pursued until this year. And I thought, okay, before I stop continuing, I want to uh, check out what's currently happening in the visualization world of graphs. And there are some new current visualization approaches, so some static ones. Most of them are based on VG, so you can use VG view and graphs to render these two nice plots, and then you can use VG vis to render basically a linearized version of a graph. Of course, there are also uh, uh, interactive solutions, okay, and most of them you can only plug in again assembly graphs, which does not really help us. So there's the Abyss Explorer, Bandage, Chief Avis, and assembly graph browser. In the meantime, sequence two maps got published, but it still is a JavaScript library and not really an interactive browser. And Momichi actually uses uh, sequence tube maps and extends it, providing several views, um, which is really nice. But because it uses sequence tube maps, it also shares some of its, uh, some of it, its disadvantages. So uh, I reached out to the community and found several other people like Josiah Zeman and Toshi Yuki, and we decided that to build a new genome graph browser. Now, currently we are facing these challenges. So the first big thing would be to find a way to zoom efficiently and to summarize the graph in certain steps together. Also, um, we want to make sure that we are able to display uh, complex variations in a human readable way because sequence tube maps is able to do that for a certain extent. But if it gets too complex, it also has its limits. Also, because we want other people to code together with us, we want to make sure that we have a clear server and client communication so we can document it very well. Um, on the client side, we must ensure that the user is able to browse the graph very fluently, even on the tablet. Also, the, our tool must be feasible for large genomes with abundant complex variants. Here's a proposal for a possible architecture of our graph genome browser. So on the back end, again, we use VG. Maybe we can uh, extend VG um, to provide us a graph service, a socket API, which we can access from our Django backend web server. The web server itself um, performs the graph summarization for the different zooming levels. It serves as an interface um, to the data structure and also to the client via web sockets. And the visualization itself, again, is executed via tube maps, and the user interface is uh, implemented in FreeActJS. Here are our next steps for the project. So, current development process is are the graph summarization steps. And connected with that, we maybe want to talk about a file format for haplotype blocks. Also, we need to extend the current front end to allow a continuous browsing of graphs. And we need to replace the sequence treatment Node.js backend with our jungle backend. So for this biohackathon, we want to use it as an opening event for our project to discuss uh, concepts and hopefully come up with a prototype implementation. Thank you very much.